and verse 11 and 12. Chapter 8, Brother Ephraim. Here it is. Behold, the days come, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water. You know, that's, that's what we uh, identify famines with is, you know, uh, no water, no bread, no food. You know, like a lot of these uh, African countries. And while the bellies is hanging out and malnourished, people just nothing but skin wrapped around their bones, big head, big bellies, don't have dying. And it's still a lot of famine out there, isn't it? For uh, bread and for. But he said, I'm not, not famous for bread and water, but, but for what? But for the hearing of the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east, and they shall go to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. That's bad. People looking for truth now. People searching for somebody that's not going to dilute the word, compromise the word, water it down, twist it. But we'll preach it exactly like it's written. Right. Huh? Yes, sir. And over here, Revelations chapter 2, verse 17. Let's read that one. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 17. He that hath an ear. Got his microphone on, Brother Moses. Brother Gilbert, he does mic turn it on. He that hath an ear. He that hath an ear. Let him hear. Let him hear. What the Spirit saith unto the churches. What the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcome. To him that overcome. Will I give to eat of the hidden man. To him that overcomes. Will I give to eat. Of the hidden man. That's what, that's what I want. The hidden man. Yes sir. Yeah. I want something that. God has preserved for the overcomers. You know they come to Jesus. And they all had went to town to get food. And while they went to town to get food, they all came back to Jesus. Jesus had just got through winning somebody to the Lord, woman at the well, and uh, telling her that uh, he would give her water that she'll never thirst again. That out of her belly would, you know, the scripture says, out of your belly would flow what? Living water. Rivers of living waters. In other words, um, um, when, when, when the, when the, um, like, like J Jacob, he dug a well for the children of Israel when there was drought. And everything around him was dried up, famine. And it was an artesian well. Thank you, Lord. In other words, he dug until he went into that third vein. That's what God told us years ago, to dig wells. And he said, don't stop at the first vein. He said, and don't stop at the second vein. We go to the third vein, the third layer, you know, waters. You know, there's rivers underneath the earth, under, underneath us rivers just like there's rivers um, comes from the Pacific waters being carried and that's where we get our rain from the waters that comes from you know all of these different uh, systems that comes in from the Pacific comes into California and eventually it gets here 
And all that water is coming from rivers that's flying, I mean, that's, that's coming on the very top of the atmosphere and uh, squeezes it out. Over here in uh, Oklahoma, squeezes them, the, the waters out, comes from the Gulf at times. And the uh, Gulf of Mexico, the um, um, what do they call those uh, hurricanes? Scoops it up and causes uh, rivers to come in our atmosphere. When we were, used to travel a lot, we used to travel in these systems and travel in these clouds and travel. Uh, and uh, travel through these, but yet they are they're carried up, they're, they're lifted up, and they're brought into the dry land and dump themselves. Floods, rains for the farmers, rains for thirsty grounds, rivers, they call them in the uh, weatherman. And I used to wonder, what do they call them rivers? But there are uh, rivers that have been scooped up through the sun, vapors, you know, of water being drawn up from the ocean and being drawn up from the sea and form clouds and, and gets into the jet streams. And when it gets into the jet streams, then they eventually come on dry land and they squeeze themselves out in tornadoes, squeeze themselves out in a, a heavy moisture, heavy rain, squeeze themselves out, you know, and gives us what we need for our farmers, Jesus. gives us what we need for our lakes and for our rivers, and to fill our reservoirs. Well, God wants, and, and that's what he was saying, out of your belly, not just atmospheres, of rivers coming from over your head, or coming from the ocean, but but um, out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living waters, waters that's got life, not just to quench your thirst, but to give you eternal life. Jesus was there ministering to that lady and telling her that if you Receive me, I give you waters. I and, and that's what he said over there in the book of um, Ezekiel, chapter um, 47. He saw rivers of waters coming from underneath the threshold of the altars, and the waters coming represent the outpouring of the Spirit in these last days. Amen. The waters became one level and it reached into the anchor. Y'all remember reading that? Ezekiel chapter 47. The waters reached into the ankles. And then the waters kept flowing from the threshold of the altars from where prayer was coming up at. Where men and women was praying. Waters coming up. The Holy Ghost flowing, coming up. Just like they was praying in the upper room. And all of a sudden, there come a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. May I pray to them clothed in tongues. That was... The early rains from prayer, prayer brought in the early rains. Well, prayer is going to bring in the last rains. And God said, I'm going to give to them that have thirsty grounds in Isaiah 35. I'm going to let water is going to flow like rivers in the desert where there's drought, where there's death, where nothing is growing. I'm going to cause waters to flow like rivers. Out of your belly is going to flow life. Out of your belly is going to flow gifts of the Spirit. Out of your belly is going to flow a mighty, powerful, uh, you know, uh, he said, your children, your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Servants and handmaid prophetically, they're going to speak. The word of God is going to flow out of them like, like a, a living word coming out. My word is spirit. My word is life. And that life is going to flow out. And when it flows out, a lot of the people that are sick are going to be healed. Jesus went about healing all that were sick with the word. 
in him was a living fountain of life. In him was a, a teaching well. A teaching me never runs dry. God want to put something in you where you never run dry. When there's drought, when there's no revival, when there's no move of God, when it looks like churches have dried up, died up, there is a move of God where there is a flow of that our teaching well, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the gifts, the joy, the power, the victory is constantly flowing. Where? From in heaven? No. Out of your belly, God is going to bring life. Out of your belly is going to come the testimony of Jesus. Out of your belly is going to come the witness of God's power that he lives, he lives, he lives in me. Oh, he lives in me. Hallelujah. Glory. Something going to live in you. Bring life to the deserts. Bring life where there's droughts. Bring life where there's diseases. Bring life where everything has become a form of godliness. Have no power. God said, I'm going to bring life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, I believe it. Jesus, right there, had talking to that woman, and nobody answered no questions. And they was bringing them something to eat. Jesus said, I got meat to eat that you know that of, didn't he? I mean, I want some of that meat. I got meat to eat that you know that of. What was that meat? The word of God said it. The word of God gave him power. Gave him authority. Caused him to go about doing good. Healing all that was sick. And oppressed of the devil. He had meat to eat. They, they wondered, which this man is wisdom? How this man get this power to raise the dead? To cleanse the lepers? To cast out devils. Where did this man get this? Where is he? What table is he eating from? I mean, he went, hid himself. He went and withdrew himself in the evenings. And God gave him heat manner. And when he came back from those places of prayer and seeking God, he had the answer. They tried to trap him, but they couldn't trap him. They tried to catch him in his words, but they couldn't catch him. He always was ahead of the devil. Always was on top of everything. Then he told us, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. John 6, 63. My words are spirit. My words are life. My words can bring life, can bring deliverance, can break yokes, can convict men of their sin, can draw them out of darkness, can bring them from the very gates of hell. Can resurrect and bring life inside of them. I've got meat to eat that you know not of. i got some hidden manner. Remember? When uh, he began to talk to the uh, disciples about Mark chapter, I believe it's 13, I'm not sure. Somewhere in, in, in Matthew. He began to talk about the word of God as a seed. And once that seed is planted, it falls. Where? Four different places. Huh? It falls where? By the wayside. And when it falls by the wayside, the buzzard comes and takes it before it takes root. And they said, what did that mean? And Jesus took his disciples aside and gave them some of that hidden manner and told them what that meant. That meant the word of God is sown. And when it's sown, it's sown inside of little babies that are spiritually babes. Inside of, inside of many of God's people that are carnal minded, natural minded. But yet, because they weren't spiritually minded, it fell on the wayside. And when it fell on the wayside, it, it didn't take root. And when trials came, they fell away. Because it didn't go in them. And there's another level. Y'all remember the second level? 
The word of God fell in that sack of that blood in his phone. Huh? It fell among the thorns and the thistles. And the thorns and thistles, he, they pulled him inside. Give us some of that hidden manna. Let us know what them thorns and thistles are. He said those thorns and thistles are the prayers of this life. Chokes the word of God out of him. Before it began to produce, you know, people, they, 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 they try to receive the word and receive prayers of life. And he said, come out from among all of them and come aside so I can get all these old thorns out of it, all these old thistles out of it. And then the word of God, another time it fell, stony grounds. Remember that? What did the stony grounds represent? People with attitude, with spirits, unforgiving spirit, hardness, unmerciful. And the word of God failed and it just dried up because it couldn't grow where there was spirits, where there was attitudes, where there was bitterness, where there was grudges. It couldn't fall. It couldn't. Then the word of God fell again on good grounds. And that means it fell where the, where the shallow ground had been broken up. You know, the word, when it, when it rains, it rains, you know, on this hard ground and it, and it runs into the uh, creeks, runs into the ditches, runs into the res it runs into the uh, low places. But we don't need it to just run off of us. We need it to absorb. We need it to go in. We need it to break up. So it can produce the proper fruit, the proper life that it needs to produce. And when it falls, as I said, among the thorns and thistles, we need the word of God to take root and not let all the cares of this life choke it out. And when it falls among the rocks, we need the word of God to go inside where there's soft ground. What, everything, not where everything is hot, hard, where everything is crushed, everything is bitter. We need to fall where the word of God can go down inside. It can't produce when it, it just falls where people have got attitudes and got spirits and got grudges and got curves of life and got all this other stuff. No. Prepare yourself for a last day revival. Prepare your hearts. Get your hearts ready for what God has promised He was going to do in this last day. And praying helps get your hearts ready. He sent His Word, and the Word exposes these things. And the Word of God is, a, is like an axe laid to the root of the tree. And it goes down and it uproots these things that shouldn't be there. Every plant that my father have not planted, I'm going to uproot it. And he tells us to ask. It's going to be laid to the root of all these trees. You know, didn't he? Hallelujah. All right. Man, I done got off in the left field here, but it's good. I'm talking about hidden manna. Then he said, the word of God falls in good grounds and brings forth on some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. This is the generation that's going to bring forth a hundred fold. The fullness of Christ. The full manifested sons of God is going to be manifested in our day. You ever read over there in the book of Ephesians? I believe it's chapter 4. And uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's chapter 4. Somewhere around verse 10 or verse 11 where he speaks. You got that? Read some of that. He that, he that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens. Uh-huh. That he might fill all things. Yes. He gave some apostles. See? He gave some Apostles and some prophets. Why? So that that word, so it won't be, um, you know, um, famine means, uh, 
A payment for the hearing of the word. Why? Because we don't have no apostles. Because we don't have no prophets. Because we don't have real pastors. Or real evangelists. Or believers. He said, and a payment for the hearing. Because we need apostles. We need prophets. We need evangelists. We need pastors. We need teachers. We need handmaids. We need servants. We need young men. We need old. So I can pour my spirit out. So they can go forth. And be a light to this generation. And be a salt. To those that need to know the truth. You should know the truth. Truth should make you free. God get rid of this famine that we're in right now. Man should not live by bread alone. We can't live by just material things. We can't live by just the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. We got to have something from heaven. My words are spirit, Jesus said. My words are life. My word goes into the soul. My word satisfies the hunger that's down inside. That, that, that money can't satisfy. That lust can't satisfy. That flesh can't satisfy. My word satisfies that spirit that's down inside. Crying out, Abba, Abba, Father. I need something for my soul. I need something for my spirit. I need something down inside of me to fight these devils. To fight these evil spirits. Yes. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, man can't live by bread alone. You have to have some meat. Jesus said, eat my flesh. Drink my blood. So you can have my life. That's what Brother Moses is reading the scriptures to you. He's reading about the meat. That's of the revelation of that hid manna. You know, he's reading it and then just going one ear and out the other. But if you have the Spirit of God in you and you've been praying, then, then that hid manna. I told you every word of God has got seven uh, letters, seven layers of revelation. Some people have never broke through the first layer. <laughs> but there's seven layers in every word of God. Jesus. And then as you pray, and as you get stronger, and as you grow in God, you reach that first layer. Oh my God. And then you read that same scripture again as you have grown up, and then you reach that second layer. Oh, I didn't see that before. And as you grow, you reach that third layer. Oh, look at there. Hallelujah. We need not just bread alone. We need the Bible said the prophets and the apostles, the word of God didn't come to them not for their own personal private interpretation, but they spake as they was moved upon by the Holy Ghost. And if it took the Holy Ghost to, to inspire them to write it, it takes the Holy Ghost in us to be able to go in there and get it. That hit man. Hallelujah. Some people try to get that hidden matter with a carnal mind. Try to get it with a natural understanding. You know, you can't get this as you've been watching TV all day. You can't get this if you're just walking in that old natural and carnal mind. You gotta come aside. Let God clean your mind. Let God, you know, uh, cause your thoughts to be pure. And then that word come in there. The word itself will clean your spirit up. It'll clean your thoughts up. It'll clean your mind up. It'll come in there and Christ will unveil himself through that word. That spirit in you will begin to become like a light turn, like a bulb light turn on. And, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't see that. See, the spirit is now revealing it. The spirit, that's that hidden matter. The spirit is giving you that revelation. Paul said, what I received, I didn't get it from man. Neither was I. He said, but it came by revelation. I went and I got alone. I got in the Arabian desert 
and I just drink bread and water and, and, and the Lord and what I got, I got it from God and when he came back with it his, his revelation established the church, his revelation is what caused Brother Moses to read over there in the book of Ephesians about the riches and the depths and the mysteries of God hallelujah hidden matter God want to give you something to live by that the world don't have, that the church world don't have. Somebody come, say, Lord, I'm one of masters. We know that thou art a teacher come from God, and you're bringing us this. Where did you get this mistress? Where did you get this kind of bread at that you can take two fish, five loaves of bread, feed 5,000 men, Beside women and children. Where did you get this at? Jesus said, you ain't seen nothing at. He said, I got meat to eat that you know not of. My meat, I am the bread of life that come down from heaven. If you eat of this bread, he said, your soul, it'll go into your soul. It'll go into your spirit. It'll transform you. It'll transform you out of darkness and bring you into light. It'll make you a new creature. You will rise up above the curse. You'll rise up above the sickness and the disease. This word I sent to heal. I sent to deliver. I sent to break these yokes. I sent to drive back the powers of darkness. I want that hidden matter. Mighty God. Want y'all? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. So say, Lord, don't you want this hidden matter? And y'all tired of this eating this light bread? What do they call this bread? So I said, brother, I don't eat light bread. I, I eat healthy. I eat that wheat bread. I eat that whole grain. Well, that's good too. But I'm talking about something that goes beyond white bread, light bread, wheat bread, grain bread. I'm talking about the bread that come from heaven. <laughs> Hidden matter. Something you can't get out of Walmart. Something you can't get from the bread counter. Huh? Well, Sister Suki, since you said that, we're going to go ahead and read over there in John chapter 6 and start at verse 47. Read a little bit of that, Brother Moses. Hallelujah. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Yes. He that believeth on me, Listen, he that believeth on me, hath everlasting life. Hath everlasting life. How many of y'all some life forever? Lasting, never die, never worried about you know being mortal, become immortal. What's what's in that bread is going to eventually change your mortal into immortality, and that corruption is going to be swallowed up by incorruption. Oh, glory to God! <laughs> I'm giving you some manna from heaven right now, and this. Well, anyway, finish reading. I am that bread of life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness. And are dead. Now they're dead. This is the bread. Which this cometh, is the bread that comes down. Uh-huh. Which cometh down from heaven. Which come from heaven. That a man may eat thereof. That a man may eat it. And not die. And drive sickness out. And drive diseases out. And open blinded eyes. And drive demons out. And drive unclean forces out. Eat of this bread and, 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 and it'll drive darkness out. It'll bring light. It'll bring eternal light. 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 Go ahead. I am, I am the living bread. I am the bread that gives. I'm the living bread. Which came living bread. How I many they want some light bread? How I many you I mean, <laughs> I mean, you want living bread? Yes, sir. I want living bread. Amen. My my mama and my uh, mother in law, man, they used to bake that bread and you could smell it. It smelled good. It was, it was good. And we put butter with it. 
Didn't have to have no honey. It was just good all by itself. <laughs> Jesus said, I'm that living bread. You ain't got to put no butter with him. You don't have to put no honey with him. He said, I'm that living bread. You eat this bread, it'll, it'll cause your spirit to be healed. It'll cause your soul, which is your will, your mind, your emotions to be healed. It'll cause your physical body that has sicknesses and diseases in it to be healed. I'm that living bread. Hallelujah. Well, you ain't never read about it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If God gave them manna from heaven, which was angels' food. Y'all remember reading about that? Gave them angels' food, manna from heaven. For 40 years, they didn't have to go to Walmart. For 40 years, not only did, it, did that bread help them, but the Bible said there was not one sick person, not one feeble person among their tribes. Ain't that something? 40 years, they never got arthritis. 40 years, they never got cataracts. 40 years, they never got high blood pressure. 40 years, they never got sugar diabetes. For 40 years, no cancer cells could grow in their bodies. For 40 years, never had to go to the old folks home. 40 years, healthy, strong. Ain't that something? Jesus said, I'm not that bread. He said, I'm the I'm living bread. That was natural. That was, that was matter from heaven. But he said, I'm that bread. He said, this is not what your fathers didn't eat in the wilderness. They ate that. They dead. But I'm going to give you something that's going to resurrect you. That's going to give you a lie that you'll never die. Hallelujah. I mean, when that hidden man, when the world is sick, when the world is suffering, when diseases and plagues and pandemics is destroying the world, I want to give you living bread. Glory. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel health. I feel healing. I feel victory. I feel strength. This is what God is doing right now. Giving you some living bread. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what he said. Where does this man get this bread from? Another one, Jesus said, my bread is my life that I'm going to give. I'm going to lay down my life for the world to be saved, for the world to be delivered, for the world to be healed. I'm giving you eternal life. I am that living bread. Read a little bit more. I'm going to try not to stop them. Just read, come on, read some of that. I am the living bread. I am the living bread. Which came down from heaven. Which come from heaven. If any man eat of this bread. If you eat of this bread. He will. Huh? He shall live forever. If you eat of this bread. You're going to live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh. The bread that I'm going to give you is my flesh. Which I will give for the life of the world. Yeah, come on. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Yes. Then Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh... How do you want this bread? Huh? I'm not talking about dry sermons. I'm not talking about so soon as the cornbread. <laughs> you always forget about what I have to say. <laughs> yeah, she's listening this morning. <laughs> My man want this bread. That's right. Eat of this bread. Thank you, Jesus. That soul that satisfies the very soul that goes where cornbread can't go. All right. That goes where you know wheat, ground uh, and grain and whole wheat. Well, well, it can't go. It can only go so far, and then it goes to the drought. 
You know what I'm talking about? Eat this natural bread. Then a day or two later, he goes to the drought. Jesus said, eat my bread. He ain't got to worry about it going to the drought. This natural bread can't cast out devils, but my bread can. This natural bread can't resist sickness and disease, but my bread can. Huh? Eat of this bread. Brother Niels, eat of this bread. What bread, brother? This hidden matter, what I'm giving you right now. You may not know it. This is hidden matter that God is putting in you. Eat it. Receive it. But the way you eat it is receive it and practice it and live it. And it will become alive in you. How does this natural bread, you know, become, come a part of you? You take it and you break it and you add butter with it and you add honey with it. And then you eat it and then it goes into your digestive system, goes into your bloodstream and you get nourishment from it. What Jesus said, just like natural bread, give you all of that. He said, when you hear my word and you receive it and you practice it, it'll become alive in you and it'll produce health. It'll produce miracles. It'll produce deliverance. It'll kill it'll, it'll, Kill cancer. It'll kill these diseases. Eat my flesh. Drink my blood. For my flesh is the bread of life that comes from heaven, which is the gospel, which is the word that he sent. Psalm 107 and 20. He sent his word to heal. He sent his word to deliver. Oh, glory. Man, I'm getting something from this. Right. I'm eating this. Yes, sir. I feel life going in me. I feel healing going in you. I feel the devil being driven out. I feel forces being driven back. Hallelujah. We need more than sermons. We need the bread of life. We need that hidden matter which God has given you here today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Man, I don't see how y'all can sit like zombies when this kind of life is coming through this word. This word is nourishing me. This word is going in me. He's quickening me. I can do Brother Terry. Brother Terry, sometimes that word put, he just, is that word going in him. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Man, I got the ears of my brother back there. Sister Lorraine's husband. I got him listening right now. The word going inside of him back there. Let me make sure he ain't sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> huh? You heard me? You receiving this? It's going in your soul, man. Going in your heart. That's why his mother, how old is your mother? That's why his mother's 109 years old. Huh? This kind of word him to live to be 109 years old. <laughs> Woman. Glory. I mean, I don't want to be no 109. I'd like to get at least 108. <laughs> Brother Larry. He said, long life. And I don't know if I want to live in this world to be 108. No wonder he said 70 years. Man, you live in this world up to 70 years. You got better to go to heaven then. <laughs> Man born of a woman in three days full of trouble. So much sickness, so much sorrow, so much death, so much disease in this world. No wonder one says 70. Thank God. Thank God. Hell. Heaven is just one, you know, just one um, breath away. You know that? You're just one breath away. And then you're there. God sent an angel, come get that soul, that spirit out that body. And he might send, uh, out a twinkle of an eye, you know, Death comes in. You want to know what I'm doing? 
You know, and God may have to send a loved one next to, hey, you've left that body. You now got a spiritual body. And I come to take you through the valley of the shadow of death and bring you into eternal life. And that angel is right there making sure them demons around can't take you down. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. In this world only we had hope. We are all men. Sister Lita would be most miserable. If all the hope we had was in this world. Thank God. We have a hope beyond this world. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Did you finish reading that? Read some, give us a little bit more. Whoso eateth my flesh. Whoso eateth my flesh. And drinketh my blood. Drinks my blood. Have eternal life. Have eternal life. And I will raise him up. Life everlasting. Never, never, never. When you have a sick day, never when you have a damn day, never when you have a miserable day. You don't have to worry about waking up on, you know, Blue Mondays. Huh? What's wrong with Blue Mondays? Never, not when you got the Holy Ghost and no more, no more Blue Mondays, but you got Jesus there. You never have to even go to sleep. You eat, then you eat of that fruit of eternal life. You're not eating it to sustain your body. You're eating it to gain more knowledge and more revelation and more of Jesus. Down here we eat to sustain the body. Up there we eat to, to become more and more. These are heavenly things I'm telling you about. Spiritual things. That's what Nicodemus said. Where you get this from? Give me some of this. Jesus said, except a man be born again. That which is born of flesh is flesh. But uh, you have got to be born of the water and of the spirit to understand where I'm coming from. This is that hidden matter. This is how I'm doing the miracles. This is how I'm doing the things I'm doing. Because I'm the bread that come down from heaven. And to understand it, you must be born again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word today. Yes. Thank you for your truth today. Did you finish reading that? Y'all got. And I will raise him up. And I'll raise him up. At the last day. At the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed. My flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. My blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh. He that eat my flesh. And drinketh my blood. Drinks my blood. Dwelleth in me. He dwells in me. And I. He in dwells him. in me. I want to dwell in him. Don't you? Dwell means. To visit, don't it? No. Dwell means to live. Dwell means to come and bring everything with you. And dwell and live there. He dwells with me. Uh-huh. As the Father, as the living Father have sent me. As the living Father have sent me. And I live by the Father. I live by the Father. So he that eateth me. He that eateth me. Even he. Even he shall live by me. Live, shall live by, we live by him. We live by his spirit. We live by his love. We live by his um, attributes. We live by the very life that he came to give us through his spirit, through his word. He live by me. You don't live by the principles of this life. You don't walk by this world. You don't go by the things of this world. But I have you set your affections upon me. And now you live and you draw love and life and strength and health and eternal life through me. This is that bread. This is the bread. Which came down from heaven. Which come down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna. Your fathers ate manna. And are dead. And they live without disease for 40 years. But this is something you're going to live forever. He that, Go ahead. He that eateth of this bread. He that eats of this bread. Shall live forever. Shall live forever. Forever. 
Do you want to live forever? Look at somebody and say, I want to live forever. In that glorified body. Not in this body. I don't want to live forever in this body. This body is like a, you know, it carries too many sickness, too many pains, too many other pains. You got to always get up and bathe it. Don't it stink? You got to always feed it. You got to always give it one. You got to always do something. Take care of this body. You born into the world. Somebody else was changing your diapers. <laughs> you live long enough, somebody else will be changing your diapers. <laughs> Look out. Huh? Look out. You born, somebody wiping your butt. You live on it. Lord, uh, somebody be wiping your butt. But not in heaven. Not with a glorified body. We're going to stop. <laughs> Come on, bow your heads a moment. Well, Ephraim, please, please, lead us in some prayer here for a few minutes. Let's talk to God here a few minutes, please. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads, saints. Lord, we thank you for this word. God, we thank you for this hidden manner, Lord. God, you told us, Lord, you have something that the devil hasn't seen, Lord, that he doesn't know about. And God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for God quickening his word inside of us, Lord, and allowing his word to be helped, to be deliverance, to be my God, uh, to meet that need. God, in the name of Jesus, help me, Lord, to let this word fall on fertile ground, Lord. Let it fall on my God. Uh, right grounds, Lord, but it can grow, Lord. God, help us, Lord. We don't want this word to get choked up with the cares of life, Lord, and get choked up, Lord, with all these things in the natural. But God, Lord, help us, mighty God, to break up our fallow grounds, God, and let this word, my God, take root inside of us, Lord, that it can produce out of its own kind. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for lifting up a standard my God, this afternoon, for moving, Lord, for us this afternoon, this is just what we needed, Lord. This, my God, this word is me in due season, Lord. God, you got here right on time, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord. My God, not just to hear this word with our natural ears, but let us to hear this word with our spirit, Lord. Help us to discern this word, my God, that we might be in health, Lord. That we might be mighty God, Lord. My God, to accept the benefits, Lord, that come, Lord. We're receiving this word. God, in the name of Jesus, let it ring in our hearts, Lord. My God, Lord. And we just ask that you continue to bless everyone, Lord. And continue to lift up a standard my, right over here in Tulsa. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. And we thank you, mighty God. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this word, Lord. We thank you for lifting up a standard, Lord. We thank you for moving, for troubling the waters. We thank you, mighty God, for getting here right on time, Lord. This word was such right on time. It's exactly what we needed, Lord, to continue on, Lord. God, you said man should not live by bread alone, Lord. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, Lord, you said that him that hath an ear, for what the Spirit saith unto the church, let him hear. God, we've heard this word, and it's, my God, is converted into that spiritual hidden man, Almighty God. And Lord, we receive it, God, every last bit of it, Lord. God, let it produce, mighty God, that which we need, Lord. My God, let it heal, my God, our loved ones. Let it reach out, Lord, to the ones that we stay burdened about, Lord. Touch their hearts, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, we thank you, mighty God, for moving the way you have moved, my God. God, I know you've done more than the natural eye can see, Lord. And for that, we give you praise. And we give you thanks, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.